Hey everybody, Wednesday, June, what is it, 26th. I have to say it's been pretty amazing following the reserve flows, bank reserve flows that I've been talking about and how I have been pinpointing to almost the exact day when we could see market tops and market bottoms. And again, just to recount uh, these reserve flows, the volatility in these flows is related to the debt ceiling. Normally, when the debt ceiling is not uh, there as an impediment, Treasury likes to keep uh, its own balance at the Fed around $300 billion. And reserve fluctuations, that is, uh, movement of reserves into the banking system and out of the banking system, it's pretty stable. But since the debt ceiling at back in March, we have seen uh, tremendous volatility in the Treasury's account and tremendous volatility in reserve flows. But these are very useful to us as traders. I mean, anyone who is with my service, you know that we have been relying on these things or, or watching these things closely. And nobody else is doing this. I said this before. It's not, it's not necessarily an MMT thing. You won't hear any other MMT person talk about this. Uh, but these flows have created this volatility up and down in the stock market. Now, underlying what's happening with these flows, and again, that's connected to the debt ceiling, and so is the rally in, in, in treasury bonds and the decline in yields. It is not suggestive of anything uh, such as a recession. And again, I think for the third or fourth time, I'm, I'll say it, I put myself out there. If we go into recession, then I deserve every sort of criticism you could throw at me, period. But right now I'm saying none. But we have been using these flows to perfectly time what's happening in the stock market. I mean, I called the May 2nd top in stocks and I said there was going to be a correction based on these flows. Then I said around June 6th we were going to have a bottom and that happened. Uh, recently, I said the June 25th we were going to have a peak in the stock market again. I mean, we just had it. June 24th, Monday, I think I sent out, you better buy some protection, some puts to the downside or buy TVIX. Uh, and we had that sell-off yesterday, which was the worst sell-off in a month. Now, now, you know, we're still in this uh, cycle now. And I gave the dates again to my subscriber when we can look for another very good bottom. Um, and I think if I didn't mention this just a few moments ago, underlying these reserve flows, which are causing all this volatility, the fiscal support is at historic levels. So we have conditions in play. And by the way, if you go over the banking metrics, as I do every week in the report, you see there is no evidence whatsoever in the banking metrics, loans and leases, bank assets, bank residual, deposits, all this stuff. There is no evidence in any of that, uh, those bank metrics of a slowdown in demand and economic growth, okay? Remember, credit is a function of demand. I mean, banks always want to lend, uh, but you need borrowers who want to borrow. And when loan and lease creation is rising and in fact accelerating, you could take that as an indication or a bellwether of a decent economy. If that were not the case, you know, uh, you wouldn't see that happening. So right now, the volatility in the market's up and down, and, and you see the market can, you know, we over time, what happens is we make new all-time highs. As I've been saying, I said that back in November and December in the correction. Okay, I said it in the May correction. Because underlying these periods of volatility, you still have positive support to the economy. So that's all there. Now, we're coming up to a weekend, I think Friday and Saturday, Trump meets with Xi, the Chinese premier. 
So they're going to try to hammer something out. Mnuchin came out just a little while ago, said that they're 90% there on a trade deal. 90%. It's not 100%, it's 90%. And you know Trump, he is very, very adept at throwing out landmines every time you think you know something's going to happen he could blow something up anyway so that's on the weekend i wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of volatility on monday uh if you know he comes away from that meeting disappointed and tweets something yesterday and this goes back to uh last week's eia report the um Energy Information Administration's weekly petroleum status report. I said the the fundamentals in that support uh, in that report, the data in that report looked pretty strong to me. Now there was there was initially selling on that report. I said you got to buy into that, and sure enough, we had a rebound, crude back over 58, and yesterday's API inventory report showed a much larger than expected drawdown in crude inventories, a large drawdown in gasoline inventories. We're approaching $59 on WTI. The EIA, the new EIA will be out shortly. As a matter of fact, when this video posts, we will already have those numbers. So there, and as, you know, I, I send these out every week, the, uh, the breakdown and the analysis on these reports. One thing very interesting, which I have been saying now for weeks and weeks and weeks, is look at refiner inputs, refiner throughputs. That is the refiner demand for crude to run through their refineries. That has been below normal for the first six months of this year has to do with refinery maintenance. Maybe some of that has to do with the lack of sour crude because of the Venezuela sanctions, but we are now finally starting to see those refiner inputs come back up to levels that would be considered normal. Well over 17 million barrels per day. That was a key ingredient that was missing, and that was one of the reasons why, in my opinion, why we saw this continued buildup in crude inventories week after week, because refiners were just not running at their capacity. They were way down below where they should have been. So that crude demand just was not there. So we will get this out. I will have that report out uh, shortly, actually as of this posting of this video, I am sure. Again, I am the only one who does this. This is an applied approach to MMT. In addition, uh, many more insights such as these bank reserve flows, which I cover every week. We, we need to see the debt ceiling increase. I mean, we don't. My people don't. Because, frankly, it's a gift to us. It is a gift to us because we understand how these flows affect the markets and we just trade these things back and forth to the day. To the day. All right, so... I mean, I would like to see the debt ceiling increase. If we do, the market goes straight up because there's just a lot of support there. And the only thing holding it back is this constant, you know, just this sloshing action of the flow, the, the reserves going in and coming out. It, it just su subjects the market to a lot of needless volatility. You eliminate that and it's like taking the brakes off, it'll go straight up. But I, you know, they're not even close on a debt ceiling increase. Both sides, the White House and the Democrats, they are not close. But we will be following it. I will be following it, as I always do. Anyway, all this stuff, if you sign up for a 30-day free trial of MMT Trader, go to pitbulleconomics.com, sign up, and of course my zombie trading service which is a daily forex signal service we front run the zombies because we know how they're going to behave we take their money and we get out before they die I just had a trade this morning on uh, New Zealand dollar uh, with the RBNZ meeting that occurred we shorted it for a quick profit very nice and it popped back up so that's it um,
Everything's there, pitbulleconomics.com, and a, a very wise investment is my course, Understanding the Daily Treasury Statement. I have said this many times, the Daily tra Treasury Statement is the most valuable resource that is literally the checkbook of the United States government. You see all the withdrawals and all the deposits on a daily basis. It is the most real-time in terms of information and data that you could possibly get. Every other economist is looking at stuff from 30 days ago or, or a quarter behind. We get this stuff every single day. It's not just real time. It is information that drives the economy. It is forward-looking. It is telling us what is going to happen. Nobody else focuses on that. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.